Now, um, some of you who know that I like rugby have actually just asked me, is this a, a thing that you put up there, try, because it's a, a little indirect thing that you're trying to tell us about, that the best sport in the history of mankind is rugby, where you score tries. But no, it's not about that. Actually, it's all about something that we do. You know, in the Word of God, you'll find the word try very seldomly. So why call it try? Because the one thing I'm going to talk to you about this morning is a situation that changed my life because there is definitely one try, we could change the word to test, that changed my life in my relationship with God and that's what I'm going to share with you this morning. There are many incidences that have changed my life, but this was one, probably when I was about 25, that had an impact like someone slapping me round the face. Now, would anybody like a slap round the face? Okay, you've seen these on TikTok. You know, they stand up there and then you slap each other. That sounds great. We should do that in staff teams. That would be fantastic. I'm just kidding, all right, everybody? I'm just kidding. But actually, this thing that I discovered changed my life. There are plenty of things, as I've said, that changed my life. Now, we're going to whistle-stop through some of these things, and we're going to go really, really fast for the first part. So take a deep breath, relax your shoulders, pin your ears out. Don't get bored as yet, because we've got a lot of ground to cover. So we're going to go super acceleration, first, second gear, 0 to 60, pretty quickly. Then we'll just slow it down before we look at the prime text. Is that okay? Now, we've also asked Nikki. She's got a... a I've said, will you try something? Notice the word on try. And she's going to keep up and type, actually on the screen, over on that side, I think it will be presented, some of the things that I'm going to say. And um, if you think that they're good things, we need some audience participation. I know it's not Panto Week. I understand that. Uh, but the things that we're going to hear, these are the core things that if you love God and what God has done, should stir your heart. Is that okay? How do we know that God loves us? We know God loves us because he demonstrates that. And how does he demonstrate that? Because he is a giving God. You see, giving is all about grace. And when I learned that giving was for my life as well, I actually received and learned about grace. Oh, so more. And so we take a look at something of a giving nature of God to start off with. So we're going to look at God the Father. I mean, first of all, he gave us life. He gave us breath. And unfortunately, I'm here as a result of that. He gave me to you for this morning. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then God gave us creation. Amazing. Don't, don't forget to stop and stare, as the poet says. The amazing things that he's put together, the design, the intricacy, and now that we're changing, I know we're changing to, hello Doc, now we're changing to, that's my granddaughter, now we're changing to autumn, um, things are changing, the colours aren't they, we're going to get all those nice russets and reds and everything else is just starting to happen. He gave us free will to make choices, and boy have you guys made some choices. <laughs> yeah, thanks Mike, you're playing well. Uh, and so did Adam and Eve. And they made a choice that actually what God had said you shouldn't, they decided that they should because they wanted to be like God. And as a result of trying to be like God, they sinned and shame came upon them. And then when God, who always wanted to connect with them and connect with them some more, as he came in the cool of the evening, they hid because of their shame and their nakedness. Sin had entered their world. But did God say, I've had enough? No. No. He gave them clothing. He took the life of an animal and sacrificed it so that they could be clothed and their shame taken away so they could continue a relationship with us. But God didn't reject them and he didn't reject us either. He gave us the Lord Jesus to the rest of humanity. And what did Jesus do? He again gave his life to die so that we might be clothed in his righteousness and be able to come near to God. 
So that's what God gave, and those are just a few of the things. But what about Jesus? Well, Jesus, the Son of God, he gave up heaven's glory. He had everything that he could possibly want, and he freely gave it up in obedience to the Father and for you, whatever your name is, for you this morning. He went, I'll happily give that up for you. So he gave up heaven's glory. He gave us a way to live life to show actually that the kingdom of God's values that God gives us, that's a great way to live life and we can do it. And he gave it to us and showed us how we could do it. He gave us our freedom and forgiveness from sins. I'm going to pause. You've heard this all before, haven't you? And it's a bit dull, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, you are a bit dull this morning. This stuff has transformed your life because God gave his one and only son. Could I ask a parent here to give me their son or to give me their daughter right now? And never, haha, <laughs> yeah, she works with me, but I don't want her. So, can I, you wouldn't do it. Because God gave us freedom and forgiveness from sins because Jesus died. God gave us hope. God gave us a future through his son, Jesus. He gives us the promise of eternity. You've got a hope that doesn't stop here. It goes on. He gives us an inheritance that actually you get to be called sons and daughters of the living God because of what Jesus has done. You get to be co-heirs with Jesus. That's been given to you for nothing. He gives us numerous promises that he will never let us go. Do you want to give up on people? Have people caused you enough pain that you think, I've had enough with you? God doesn't give up on you through his son, Jesus. And Jesus gave us the Great Commission. Stuff that we can do as well. That's something what Jesus gave. And then what about God the Holy Spirit? What does he give us? Well, he breathed life to us. He gave us his presence and his comfort. He's a gift from God. He gives us gifts so that we might honor him and serve in this world. He gives us anointing so that we might have power for daily use. He gives us wisdom beyond our own understanding. He gives us faith when we lack it. He gives us the word and plants it in our lives so that we might understand how to live for him. He gives you talents and time and treasure so that you might serve him. You see, the God who loves you demonstrates his love for you because he gives. That's it. He gives you everything. There's not one person in this room who God is not prepared to give up his one and only son for. And so he did. And what should we do if we're made in his image? We should be givers as well we should be givers as well you know we show our love back to God by what we do by what we say we sang songs this morning with words that describe how we feel about God which is great and you can tell people how you love them which is great but you also show them how you love them by your actions and what you do with what you have Jesus, when he came, he continued the theme of serving and giving. God, in the Old Testament, his people, he wanted them to become natural givers. And so he insisted that in the law that whatever they earned, whatever they received, they would give back to the work of the God and give back also to those who had the least. And Jesus took on that mantle and he showed us things in the Gospels that we see how he interacted with people who got the understanding of giving. He saw the widow, the widow who gave just a small little mite and they were like, oh wow. And he said, no, she's given everything. He saw the little boy who gave five loaves and two fishes and, and they said, well, that's insignificant, but no, Jesus took what everybody else had decried as nothing and made it something because of the willingness of the gift. 
He acknowledged the brokenness of the woman who was caught in adultery, and people knew the kind of woman she was when she took her prized gift of nard, perfume, very expensive, and she broke it at the feet of Jesus. And the others thought it was scandalous. How dare you let a naughty woman do that in front of you and wipe your feet with her hair? But he acknowledged the sacrifice. He acknowledged that she had given. And then there was the man who gave the donkey for Jesus to ride. And, and so it goes on. And sometimes they challenged him. Okay, Jesus, that was the law. Here's a coin. Who should we give it to? Because they wanted to trap him. Should we give it to God? Or should we give it to Caesar? The people who were ruling at the time. If we give it to Caesar, then we can't give it to God. And Jesus just answers them. Look at the coin. Who's on the coin? Caesar. Well, you give to him what he needs as the ruling authority over your life. But, and, you give to God what is God's. I want to read from the scriptures about what the early church did with regards to this giving and how it transformed their life. And how I say to you that giving is all about an act of grace. So let's read it. You'll find it with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 from verse 8 onwards. It's about the Macedonian church and uh, we hear and see what these kind of people were like with regards to understanding what God had done in giving them something and then reflecting on what they should do in relation to how they showed their love for God in giving to others. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. And so we urged Titus just as he had earlier made a beginning, a bringing to also completion of the act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness and in love that we have kindled in you, see that you also excel, notice the two words that come together now, in this grace of giving. Grace, as you well know, is the little nuance that some people say is God's riches or you could say God's righteousness at Christ's expense and it's freely given you excel in the grace of giving and notice the next word you don't have to do it I'm not commanding you we'll pause there now, we'll read on. But I want to testify the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. Let's carry on. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich. We just talked about that. He humbled himself. Yet for your sake he became poor, so that through poverty we might become, what? Rich. And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work, so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by the completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable, according to what one has, not according to what he does not. Paul teaches and reminds those he's writing to the Corinthian church that there's an example to see here from those who had least, that they were still willing to give. And why were they still willing to give? He wasn't commanding them. The word of God doesn't say, you must. The word of God says, if you're made in the image of God and you see that God gave up his riches and that Jesus became poor so that we might become rich, then we, who are his disciples, reflect something of who God is and what he's like. And that's all about generosity. It's about giving. Not only your time uh, and the gifts and the skills that you have, but also your money, your treasure, your wealth, your stuff. Now, I have a little 
bit of Duplo here. Uh, it now resides in my household. It used to be my children's. It's now Dot's. And um, um, one of the things that I like to do is uh, with her uh, when, when she comes around is we build this. She, she quite likes at the moment, if I build a tower, you know, they just knock it down. And then she likes to peel them all apart, which is great, which is great. But you see, all those things that I've just mentioned to you um, about, like, for example, what God has given, these represent what God has given to us. And so there's quite a few of them, actually. In fact, if you were to read the Bible, you'll find it from page to page. God continually is to give. He gives us life every day. He gives us new mercies every morning. He continues to be that kind of giving God. And as a result, what he does is he starts to make us feel secure because we know what he's like. He's like the kind of God who has a certainty and so that we can be definitely within his will because we see that God is a giving God and that we can live in that center of knowing who he is like. And here's a little me. In there, little me, but definitely a little me. And I can sit in that there. I'm surrounded by the giving of God and his love for me. But guess what happens? In life, what happens is that suddenly I put something as another security in my life in order to feel safe. And I shut this flow of giving from God and I put the me and the money and I build a little tower because you see that keeps me safe. I've decided that money, and there's nothing wrong with money ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we need it every day because it's the way our society works. But what happens is we make this the gateway, this the security. And we say, actually, I trust God with so much, but I'm not going to trust him in this. And so to do so, I'm going to hold on to that because that's mine and that's not his. And to be honest, I'm not sure actually God gave it to me because I've earned it. Well, you have earned it and well done for working because working is actually a godly thing. But God gave you life. He's given you hope. He's given eternity. And he's made you a steward of these things. Not just for your good pleasure and to look after your family and to look after your well-being. All godly things. But to be stewards that invest in the kingdom of God's work. When we take our hands off money being the central security and put that down and say actually God I'm going to let you become the central security you first in all things there's a doorway that opens and the grace of God floods in God says he loves a cheerful giver God says trust me in this you can read it in Malachi 3 and here's the first word about trying. If you try or test me in this with regards to this giving, see if I will not bless you. It doesn't mean a Mercedes, okay? You might be fortunate enough to have one of those. But we're not giving to get. You see, God doesn't want something from us. He wants something for us. And for us is our hearts to say, thank you, God, everything that you have given me is yours and when that is we receive the grace of the god because we're no longer prisoner to the security of money that binds us and said i need this in order to survive what happens if what if what if yes we need to be good stewards because that's a godly principle but not when it becomes second to who god is you see when i started this journey of giving it was transformatory in my life. I wanted the security of having the money that I had earned. And so I began, and I sometimes have shared it with you, as a giving ladder. Instead of just like, oh, what change have I got? 
Oh yeah, that will do. I actually decided, now I purposefully, this is something that I've received from God. I'll give a little proportion regularly, weekly, monthly. And so I took a step of faith onto this ladder that allowed me to see, am I going to collapse? No, God supported me. And then I said, okay, well, um, by the way, Sarah, who I was married to when she was alive, uh, she got there way before me. Ladies, you sometimes do do that quicker. She was way ahead. She was doing the 10% thing. I was like, oh. So I got to the 5%. And I realized, oh, wow, God. I, I'm, I'm still okay. <laughs> That's amazing. He just blessed me. And then I got to, to the step and went up to 10%. And that was my tie. You see, God in the Old Testament said, tithe from your first roots, the things that you grow, the things that you make. Give it back to God, to the priest, to look after not only those who share and care for you, but those who are poor. And some people say, oh, well, that was the old law. We're under grace now. How much more under grace? We just read it. Because under grace means there's no limit. <laughs> it just says your heart. He wants, God loves a cheerful giver. Because it's purposefully, your head space, your heart space has changed. That everything comes from God. And now I'm free to trust him. And I went up those steps. And so as a church over the last hundred years, we have preached and teached. David and others formerly before me have teached that tithe from your gross. Give to God what is God's into the center, to the place which is your spiritual home, your house, your place that you live. And I've tithed here as your pastor, as one of them. Um, the leaders here, those who are your trustees and those who are your uh, elders and those are most of the staff team and ministry team, I've asked, well, I asked last year, I think it was, are you tithing? Yes, they are. And it's not so that I can have a big fat house in a posh place. You see, the work of the money goes to the generosity of the saints that are here. And this building that we're in, it cost a million, people gave a million. It cost another million to actually get to the place it was, and people gave a million. And that's amazing generosity. And you know, this building costs about 500,000 pounds, there a bit, or sometimes 600, to run every year. Half a million. That's what it costs. And as a result, we can have 350,000 people come through the door every year. And we can touch them with the presence of God and share with them like they do at the Lifehouse and other events that they come to. And in a couple of weeks' time, we're just going to celebrate our Thanksgiving harvest service. Note the two words go together, thanks and giving, where we just see all the big wins that God has done. Life's changed. It's great to see <coughs> Tiana just sharing about that. She was baptized, and now she's dedicating her baby. Amazing stories, and there's loads of them. And that's through the generosity of thousands of people over the years who decided to give regularly and start. You know... If everybody gave £3.50 a day, we have approximately 350 to 375 Ask George, he knows who is in church commitment, who's, who says they're here, who's with us, who says this is your church that we, we're with. As a result, we can do those things. And if everybody gave just even £2, £3.50 a day, we would cover the 500,000. At the moment, our giving raises up to about 230, maybe 240,000 without special giving. That's amazing. And this year alone, I'm going to move on from the finances in a minute, okay? This year alone, our expenses, like yours, energy bills. Come on, what's that about? Ours have gone up by 20,000 pounds, doubled overnight. And then our interest rates on the loan that we have, that went, heesh. And as a result, that's another 50,000 pounds that we have to find. And uh, we're looking to each other to, come on, let's tithe. Let's give an offering. And then you'll see the lovely pictures up here. There's the challenge of, over here is, uh, you remember I've mentioned this before and I'll mention it again. One of the older ladies in the life of the church who has nothing, and I mean nothing, she's on benefit. Over two years, she saved and she came to my office and said, can I see you? I said, yeah. She said, I believe that God's saying that we should get rid of this million pound loan that we have. And I went, I agree. How are we going to do that? She said, a thousand thousands. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, are you a man of faith? Can you believe for a thousand pounds now? I think, yeah, I can believe for a thousand. No problem. So she said, pray. Uh-oh. 
<coughs> so I said, okay, I'll pray. Lord, you know I need, you know this lady's vision. I need a thousand pounds to start this. I opened my eyes and she gave me a thousand pounds. She said, this is my legacy for the generations to come. I've saved this over two years so that we can get rid of that million pound mortgage. And I think I've shared it four or five times now. And today, ladies and gentlemen, as a result of that lady's faith, we now have 20,000 pounds. And that only started, I think I only started sharing it about three months ago. So we can color in two of these little blocks here as a result of someone who took that little step of faith. How did it change my life? It changed my life because I realized that if I put God first, I can receive the grace of God because the grace of God is an amazing free gift to you. God so loved the world that he gave. And grace is that God's riches at Christ's expense. If you're sat here, if you know Jesus, it's because the God who loves you demonstrated that love without hesitation, without question, without fear, without any... He just said, because I love you. I give everything for you, including my son. And when I realized that, I said to God, if you gave me everything, then why not have my money as well? I'm not saying that to sound pompous or anything else, but as a result of taking that step of faith, like the Macedonians, the grace of God flooded into my life. The doorway was opened for him to prove me in all these different areas. All these gifts that he gave me, that he showed and demonstrated, all of them there and there and there and there and there. And they keep building and they keep building. And so I feel safe and secure because I need to trust him. When I don't trust him is when I decide that actually, no, 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 you can't have every part because I'm just going to build this little gate for myself and he goes come on son I know the days of your life I loved you so much I gave everything take the door away put the money in my hands and so in my budget and if you don't know how to budget by the way and you got yourself into debt then we have people that can help you how to do a budget we have people that can help you actually process your debt because we don't want you to get into debt, into debt, into debt, into more debt. Because actually, it's good stewardship and good giving go hand in hand. Stewardship and generosity are friends. They're purposeful friends. And so why did try giving change everything? Because I took my security away from the stuff I had and decided, actually, you're enough. So where my budget, and if you want to see my budget, I'm happy to show you. At the very top of the line, it says God. And that's the amount. My gross. That's the amount. Because it reminds me, actually, everything underneath comes from him. Everything underneath, when I trust him, he supplies. Everything underneath shows me that if I trust him in this, I can trust him in the rest of my life as well. And so, when you've got time this afternoon, have a little read of Malachi 3, whichever translation you want to read it. Some will say test, some will say try. God says, try me in this and see if I will not bless you. And so, I finish with this. If you've never tithed before, then I'm going to offer you a deal. And the deal is this. Start. Make it regular or maybe even a, a certain step on the ladder like I did. And do it for three months. And if after three months you're in real bad situation, then Nikki, who's got lots of money, <laughs> she, she will give you that money back and perhaps a little bit of interest as well to help you. But if you try this with God and go, actually, I'm going to try a giving time, and after three months, 
and it's worked, semi-challenge it. Just give a bit more. See what happens. Because God says, I'm blessed. And I love cheerful givers. That's why Try Giving changed my life. And I hope it changes yours because the grace of God comes unmerited, unmerited, when we realize that all comes from him and he's the giver of all good things. Amen.